So why would anybody want to leave Windows, a perfectly good operating system that everybody develops their games for, in place of Linux? There's a couple of reasons why I don't like Windows 11 specifically. Windows 11 is slow and clunky. Windows 11 has ads and it's, they're probably gonna be more ads. And Windows 11 is uh, trying to incorporate AI spyware. I don't like the whole concept of Windows 11. I don't like how it started and I don't like where it's headed. The second reason why I wanna go all in on Linux is I run a YouTube channel about open source hardware and software and I wanna practice what I preach. The third reason is I kinda always wanted to switch to Linux but I always had an excuse not to. And all those excuses are kinda gone now. Gaming on Linux used to be kinda niche and took a lot to get going and a lot to maintain. And I didn't wanna have to go through all that just to maintain my operating system because I do use it for work as well. And now it's not complicated at all. There are a ton of Linux distributions out there focused on gaming and maintaining all your firmware and everything you need to maintain. And now that we're talking about Linux distributions, let's talk about the ones I focused in on. Starting out with the popular Pop! OS, a lot of people use it for gaming on Linux. It's nice and easy to set up. And that was kind of my first choice on the top of the list. Next up was Ubuntu, also another very popular OS and one that I'm really familiar with. It just didn't have a lot of the out of the box experience that Pop! OS had, so I kind of knocked it down a notch. Manjaro was another one that I had on my list, mainly because it's Arch based and Arch is a very lightweight operating system. And I picked Manjaro for that very reason. My logic was the more lightweight the operating system, the more power it has left over for gaming. And there was one Linux distribution that I came across when I was looking for different operating systems to replace Windows on, on my Lenovo Legion Go. And that was called Nobara OS. Nobara OS is a user-friendly Linux distro designed to be an easy transition for those familiar with Windows. It offers a polished, out-of-the-box experience with pre-configured settings and software, making it one of the best Linux distros for gaming, work, and general use. A guy that goes by the name online of Glorious Egg Roll, I love that name, is the main reason why I chose Nobara OS. I don't know much about him, but I know he's super passionate about gaming on Linux and has developed Nobara OS, Proton GE, and many other open source projects for gaming on Linux. His passion for this project is pretty much what drew me to Nobara OS. Now I just mentioned Proton. If you don't know what Proton is, Proton was developed by Steam and was the backbone for Steam OS, a Linux based operating system. And with the release of the Steam Deck, it's improved even more. Think of Proton as a translator that sits on your Linux distribution that translates those Windows applications so they can speak Linux. And then comes Proton GE, the special sauce that Nobara OS has. Proton GE is a custom version of Proton developed by Glorious Eggroll GE. It includes additional patches and customizations that aren't included in stock Proton. It makes it sort of the faster, looser version of Valve's Proton. Now that we have the distro picked out that we want to use, it's time to talk about some of the challenges that I might run into. I know that all of my work apps are gonna work okay because I use a Linux machine at the office. But there are a couple apps that I run on my gaming PC that I know I'm gonna have some trouble with. One of those apps being Steam Remote Play. I know Steam Remote Play is a pretty simple application to run, but I did run into problems with it when I first set it up because I stream games from my gaming PC over to my arcade machine. And I ran into a couple of problems with input because the arcade cabinet isn't a traditional input device and other things like that. So I can only imagine how much more complicated it's gonna be with Linux. It might not be at all, but I'm just, I'm ready for the challenge. Another one of those apps is DaVinci Resolve. That's my editing software. Now DaVinci Resolve does have a Windows application on their website, but I did some research and I saw that people were having a lot of problems with Fedora 39, which is what Nobara is built on top of. And I'm expecting to run into some problems with it. Enough talking, let's get Nobara OS installed. So to get everything set up, I went over to the Nobara OS website and downloaded the ISO image. I got my flash drive imaged with one of my favorite imaging software, Rufus, and I went through all the prompts to get my arcade machine and my main PC's boot drives imaged with Nobara. I did have to use one of the optional boot methods with minimal graphic settings so that the UI would load and give me a nice stable environment so I could click around and get all the graphics drivers installed. Once it loaded up, I just had to click and mount all my drives so I could get all my games recovered, and that went smoothly. No lost data. Then it was time for software and firmware updates. After that, I went ahead and created my gaming and work user accounts. Then it was time to install all the software. For work, I need Slack, Skype, RingCentral, Obsidian, and a web browser. For gaming, I need Steam, my emulators, DaVinci Resolve, OBS, Audacity, and Discord. The arcade machine pretty much stayed stock. All I really need is Steam on it and a couple of emulators. I did have to do a little bit of work to get all my various controllers working. Of course, it's a nice luxury for Windows being already supporting Xbox controllers right out of the box, but it's really not that complicated to get controllers set up on Nobara OS. And I think that pretty much covers everything. If I left something out or if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I'm ready to do some benchmarks and test out some games. Let's go. All right, so let's go over the benchmarks. CPU looks pretty much the same. But as you can see, when we go over to the GPU benchmarks, it tells a different story. Now for the game lineup, 
I just went with a couple of games that were in my recently played on Steam. That includes Street Fighter 6, Halo Master Chief Collection, Baldur's Gate 3, and Guilty Gear Strive. And keep in mind, I'm running these games with OBS to record my screen. I'm also running Discord and a web browser. The transition to Linux has been fun, but it hasn't gone without challenges. Even though I studied Linux in college and worked with it every day in some capacity, it still didn't prepare me for daily driving Linux. One of the issues is I had to boot to the flash drive multiple times before I realized that I had to set the minimal graphics settings so that I could use the UI without issues. Another was trying to get Steam Remote Play set up. I actually had to go into the Steam logs to figure out why it kept crashing. But I eventually figured it out by using a different version of Steam. The third issue was DaVinci Resolve, my editing software that I mentioned, would not load at all. I did some research and I found that I had to remove some depreciated libraries that were keeping it from loading. Also, I had to learn about the different file types that Fedora 39 supports. It ended up changing my workflow a little bit. To get into a little bit of the nitty gritty, I had to take my video files that I recorded on my iPhone and convert them into ProRes proxies so that I could work between my MacBook and my gaming PC. But other than that, I'm pretty much editing exactly how I did on Windows 11. These are the kind of issues you'll run into, especially during your initial setup. But each issue I solved was a learning experience that may cause other people some anxiety, and that's understandable. If you want to remain just a hobbyist, that's perfectly okay. You control when, how, what, and where you use your Linux operating system. If you're thinking about switching to Linux full time, or you want to try it out, I made this video weighing the pros and cons before I decided to switch. If you want to follow the Linux journey, check out this other playlist.